Now, young women who, as 14-year-old girls, were sexually abused while in council care in West Yorkshire have won an apology from the local authority, whose job it was to keep them safe. The girls were groomed by nine men of predominantly Pakistani heritage. The abusers were jailed for a total of 132 years at Bradford Crown Court in 2019. Today's apology follows a review into the case, or of the case, by organisations including police and social services. The victims were living in a council care home when the abuse happened. Staff knew the girls reportedly were being groomed by different men who would turn up outside, but at the very least, care home employees lacked the legal wherewithal to do anything about it. Well, the apology is welcome, but ought to be extended to those who sought to blow the whistle on this national scandal, but who were howled down at the time as racists and bigots. In particular, I'm thinking of the former Labour MP for Keithley, Anne Cryer, who was widely vilified, not least by some fellow backbenchers, for drawing attention to a story nobody wanted to acknowledge officially two decades ago. As a reporter, I visited Anne Cryer's then home in Shipley, on the outskirts of Bradford, more than once, to hear her stories of being ignored by the authorities. She was rebuffed by the council, who said it was nothing to do with them, and the police, who seemed powerless to act. For years, hers was a lone voice in the wilderness. At times, the slurs directed at her took on a sinister character. Police installed a panic alarm at her home after threats were made against the MP. But her words and those of others, did eventually have an effect. The then Home Secretary and fellow Yorkshire MP, David Blunkett, introduced a new offence of grooming, which has ultimately led to hundreds of subsequent prosecutions across the country. Well, joining us now is the anti-abuse campaigner Maggie Oliver, a former police detective turned whistleblower herself, who quit over the Rochdale grooming scandal. Maggie Oliver, welcome to you, and thanks for your time this evening. We appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Just, just on this review... Uh, today. It's by the Bradford Partnership, which, you know, council jargon, really, for the police, social services, other agencies as well. But how big a deal is it for them to say sorry to these two particular... Well, they're not girls anymore, but these two young women who were so badly abused? It's pointless. Um, you know, how many... Your, your viewers must be listening to this story and think it is a rerun of what we've been hearing for 20 years. You know, it's another apology um, where they say lessons will be learned and all the rest of it. But, you know, I resigned because of what was happening 10 years ago in Rochdale. Previous to that, I was involved in a case uh, in Manchester called Operation Augusta, which was identical to this. We're now 15 years on. And as a result of what I learned after resigning, um, I started the Maggie Oliver Foundation, where we help survivors and victims of child abuse every single day. Um, this is Bradford. This is Yorkshire. I can tell you that in the last six months, we are dealing with 31 cases from West Yorkshire alone. We've referred nine of those cases to Operation Hydrant, which is the national lead for child sexual exploitation and child abuse in the UK. Bradford is just another case. This is going on everywhere. What we're finding in the foundation, um, that the worst cases um, that we are aware of are West Yorkshire and GMP. And, you know, the victims and the survivors who come to us for help are alone. They feel they've got nowhere else to go. They're being blamed. They're being ignored. There are cover ups and there is a lack of concern, you know, and they are typical of the case that you're talking about here. You know, these children are in care. They are taken away from homes because they are deemed to be at risk. I would argue that they are being put into situations that are even more risky than when they're in their own home. And when we've got a 15 year old child that the authorities are allowing to get married, who has been made pregnant, you know, what is going on? It destroys lives and it's about time that we did something as a country to address it. Uh, Maggie, when I read the, the length of time, the total sentence of 132 years given to, to nine attackers, uh, I wondered whether that would have an exemplary effect in terms of sentencing. That's a, that's a long stretch for those individuals concerned. Does that not have a deterrent effect? I think it's a step in the right direction. When I look back to the, the Rochdale case, 
um, those men weren't, even a child that one of those men got pregnant wasn't even charged with rape. So I do think it is a step in the right direction, but it is still the tip of the iceberg. Um, there are so many cases that are not being um, prosecuted. I mean, every week we have another uh, report. Just recently, we've learned that the CPS are charging less than 1% of rapists or um, alleged rapists with offences. You know, there are so many abusers walking the streets. We are meant to be um, one of the richest countries in the world. And yet I'm ashamed of what is going on in our criminal justice system. And I don't blame the individual police officers. I blame those at the top of our institutions.